Hey, welcome investors to the 40 Finance Channel. My name's Jeff Beers. Gonna look back at the stock market crash we had today here on March 4th. I'm gonna show you how the crash affected my stock portfolio and which stocks I did end up buying the dip on today. Hopefully all of you were able to manage the dip uh, in your portfolio, whether that's holding long, things will bounce back uh, eventually, or maybe you took some profits uh, good for you if you did. Reminders always in my stock picks and projections. They're just my opinion for your entertainment. Please make sure you do your own research before jumping into any stock. And hey, if you like stock market analysis like this and watching my portfolio go down in a crash, uh, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everyone who has supported the channel so far. All right, before we jump into my portfolio, just share my two cents on this activity. Um, I think, honestly, we're all just getting a little spooked by the interest rate increases. And the best way that you can measure that is to follow this uh, TNX. You can see it's in my watch list here on Yahoo. And this is the 10-year. And basically, uh, you know, let me just tell you that 1.5% is absolutely incredible. And it's a fantastic time. Uh, to borrow money from a historical basis. But if we do expand a little bit, here's just today, uh, you went from 1.47, you know, at, at some points up to 154. And while that, you know, ended up being about plus 5% on the day, guys, from like a historical basis, if we go uh, five years out, this is 2016, uh, we've had way worse times, but the market always gets jittery when there is an upward uh, trajectory. And you can see, obviously, after uh, the pandemic and the Fed rolled in and lowered rates and, and this sank all the way down to a half a percent, but it is starting to go up and it's really started to go up a lot here, uh, technically a lot, I guess you could say, 50% or so. Uh, since January. So if we flip on just like the year-to-date chart, on January 4th, it was 0.9%, uh, and now you're at 1.5%. And if you do a six-month chart from a market standpoint, and you go back to, let's call them the glory days in September, where stocks were trading high, you're at 0.66%. And so you've essentially added uh, a full percentage point. Now, a full percentage point is nothing normally that most people would worry about, uh, but it just makes people jittery in the market. And then, of course, once you get a little bit of a sell-off, uh, you have the paper hands uh, folks, right, who, who follow right behind them and they're sell, sell, crazy, get out. People are really nervous, uh, understandably, about losing money. But I don't think that we are in... Uh, like an economic crash cycle. It certainly doesn't feel that way. It feels like we should be heading into um, a good time in terms of consumer spending and all those things, assuming you know vaccinations and everything go as planned. I would anticipate that the summer uh, shopping season, the summer travel season uh, should be up significantly year over year. But keep in mind, that we've seen stocks like Disney, for example, and I know Disney has their streaming service, but I did a travel stock video a couple weeks ago, and even names like Expedia, right, that, that have some debt to work out on their end, and airlines and everything, they're all trading higher uh, than they were uh, prior to the pandemic last year. So again, stocks uh, tend to run ahead of the economy. We haven't seen that travel yet. Uh, now you're starting to have higher interest rates as the world uh, gets a little bit closer to recovery. And then you have fears of inflation. So uh, in my mind, this is just a lot of the froth, if you will, being taken out of the market. All right, so here's my portfolio. And if you're new to the channel, I put all of my holdings uh, into Yahoo, as well as the cost basis. Just makes it easier to share uh, without having to log into my Ally account. And quite honestly, uh, Yahoo's a little bit more colorful uh, and easier to look at statistically. 
uh, than Ally Bank is. And we are just past close on March 4th, and portfolio setting in at about $102,000. I did lose $4,700 today in uh, unrealized loss, if you will. Total though, I'm still up, you know, about plus 25% in unrealized gains. So we're not in negative territory by any stretch of the imagination. Just need to be careful and make sure that we don't see a more severe downturn. All right, so looking at my stocks today, oddly enough, Palantir, which probably has some froth to give, was actually up 4.83%. Uh, my cost basis is $27.30 on that one, and I really should uh, be trying to lower that cost basis, but my next target for Palantir is probably close to $20, and I haven't seen a lot of that activity, so I haven't added any. So while Palantir was up, my cost basis at $27, it still equals uh, minus 9.4% or a loss of $128. Unity Software, this is one of a couple that I own uh, that are not uh, fundamental plays. They're growth plays, uh, close your eyes plays, if you will. You can find the video I did about Unity Software. Uh, it's not my traditional play and it's uh, really cost me from a valuation perspective because I'm in at 119 and this one dropped a decent chunk, dropped under 100. I did pick up a couple shares of Unity today. I will get the whole scoreboard on that uh, after we get through each holding here. At the end of the day on Unity though, I'm down you know, basically 20%. It has been one of my worst investments, but to be fair to Unity, uh, I just bought in in January. All right, next up is Sabre. This is a travel recovery play and Sabre actually held pretty strong. This is stock that was down significantly last year. Um, I bought it, I believe I bought it in this calendar year, I can't remember, but recently for $11 as a travel bounce back play, still up on that one plus 39%. And the outlook for Sabre is pretty good. I'm sort of hoping this hits to be a $20 stock before the end of the year. We'll have to see, but it's good uh, that it was one of the few winners today. End phase is my solar stock play. Uh, you can watch a couple videos about end phase on my channel. I really like this stock. Unfortunately for me though, I bought in at the 200s. So I really bought in high on this one. And I made a joke about it on the channel when I did buy it. And that's come back to uh, bite me a little bit in this environment. To date, I'm down 20% on Enphase, but this is a stock that I did purchase today, trying to lower that cost basis number, which is now down to 186. Next up is a SPAC BFT. This will eventually become PaySafe, and I highly recommend uh, DraftKings investors, if you're into DraftKings, take a long, hard look at BFT which is transitioning to pay safe. I think that it's a great uh, stack play, if you will, uh, with that stock. And BFT, I bought, uh, I think about another 100 shares. We'll see in a second. But I bought more BFT. My original cost basis was really close to $15. It's now down to $14.35. On paper, I'm down minus 3% on BFT. And that is because even though this cost basis is relatively low, BFT finished the day at $13.95. All right, Square. Uh, I have a very small Square position. You can see 20 uh, shares just started in it this year. And I was at $214, but I decided to buy more Square because it's went as high as $275, uh, which I argue is very overpriced for Square. But I do like Cash App. I like the you know potential future there. So I added a few more shares, which brought my cost basis to 216, actually raised it a little bit. Yeah, but look at this, you know, almost up 1% on Square. I think Square bounced back eventually, but please note that I do think Square is still overvalued. Next up is Amazon, which I really wanted to buy today, but I bailed on it. Um, I only have one share of Amazon at $3,300. I'm down 10%. I do want to add one more share uh, if I can, 
at under 3,000. So that is uh, one of the things I may do tomorrow. We'll have to see. But I do like Amazon under 3,000, particularly with that huge earnings per share number that they have. Uh, and we may also see a split from them perhaps over the next year or so, which I think would attract more attention. Next up is Etsy, which has been one of my best performers. Uh, Etsy stock, I'm now in at 139. I bought four shares of Etsy. It actually raised my cost basis a little bit, but I'm still sitting at plus 42%. Next up is Smile Direct Club. This is a pandemic bounce back play. I bought this in fall at $7.64 when things were uh, not looking so hot for the company and they had a very long winter um, and they dropped 275% today. Um, I'm up 38%. This is gonna be an interesting one later because uh, they have an earnings report coming out. I really wanted to buy more SDC today, but I was hoping the price would go under 10 and it never did. All right, Taiwan Semiconductor finished today at 115. Um, I bought a couple shares of Taiwan Semi. Uh, 89.53 is my cost basis, and I'm up 30% on that one, plus it offers a generous dividend. PayPal is, I think, my biggest market value holding, uh, at least while the price is 239. I got in at 187. I did not add any PayPal today. Um, if you're curious, I would maybe consider adding more under 220, but it's run up quite a bit and it plays off Bitcoin a little bit. So I'd still like to see a steeper discount if I were going to buy, uh, but I remain uh, very bullish on PayPal and I'm up 27%. All right. Yes, this is correct. Rocket stock still sits in my portfolio, uh, 290 shares, cost basis in 1984, I did consider selling it when it was briefly above $40. Uh, mentally, I wanted to hold out for 50 because I thought the momentum could get that high. Uh, I'm okay uh, mentally that I didn't sell it. That's fine. I think it bounces you know, back into the 30s at some point. I am up 35% and I think Rocket, You know, I don't know that it's a $100 stock, but I think that it has more room to run so I'll wait patiently. My one year uh, capital gains anniversary for this one would be somewhere in August, I believe. All right, next up is Visa. I haven't touched Visa in a long time. Uh, 60 shares at 189. This is a one to keep your eye on if you're looking for something uh, to buy on a dip that may have a really good summer. Uh, Visa has been struggling without travel. Travel's coming back. I love the company for the long term and I'm up 11%. DraftKings, we talked about BFT, a uh, huge fan of DraftKings, a uh, very long hold for me. This is not something, uh, they, their EPS will not turn positive. It, it could be, geez, 24, 25. So uh, I'm happy to be in here at 34.56. So far it's paid plus 79%, even with today's dip of uh, losing 6%. Uh, so I like DraftKings and I'm perfectly fine if it were to fall even further. I might consider picking up some more DraftKings under $49. All right, TAP, Coors Light. And this is when you're glad that you have a couple of dividend stocks. Uh, TAP is up 1%. They struggled with, you know, concerts and sporting events being closed. This is for Coors Light beer. Um, I'm in at $34.58 after... Uh, selling off some more expensive shares, and I'm up 31%. TAP will eventually reinstate a dividend, and this is a great play to have on days like today. TJX, which is TJ Maxx stores, a little bit of a hit today, minus 1.75%. Uh, I have 105 shares at $48, and I'm up plus 30%. TJX is another potential dividend stock if it gets reinstated. It's also a sort of return to normal play. So I have no plans to uh, get rid of TJX. And lastly, Bitcoin GBTC, which I bought, you know, seemingly 100 years ago at $9.90. It is technically my best performer at uh, plus 300 percent. But, you know, it's a minuscule amount of money, uh, just 100 shares. I would consider adding more GBTC. 
uh, probably under $30. It, it would just be me kind of taking a pulse on the Bitcoin market, but I would consider adding more. All right, so bottom line, here's my crash portfolio update. Uh, lost $4,700 in paper losses, landing at 102. I did not sell anything, including Rocket, where I remain strong, hoping for better days. I'm currently focused on lowering existing cost basis where I can. If I were to buy something new right now, it would probably be Google uh, just off the top of my head. But as I noted here, I am redoing my watch list after all this activity, and that'll be a different video with the new watch list. All right, and then finally, I tried to paste my um, market transactions from Ally, but I don't know how clear it's going to be. Uh, but here's all the things that I bought today uh, for Etsy stock at 191. That took my cost basis from 133 to 139. I bought a total of 90 because here's a 50 and here's a 40. I bought a total of 90 BFT shares uh, for one lot for 1427, one lot for 1308. At the end of the day, my cost basis dipped from 1479 to 1435. I bought five shares of Taiwan Semi at 119. That actually raised my cost basis from 89 to 92. Then I bought uh, five shares of Unity Software for 102. Could be adding another five shares tomorrow if it's still under 100. Uh, that lowered my cost basis from 125 to 119. Then I added five shares of Square at 224 and that actually raised my cost basis from 214 to 216 but i'm still in the green on square total and i mentioned n phase five shares at 157 cost basis dropped from 190 to 186 i'm buying a lot more n phase than i originally attended to just because i got in so high in the 200s that I've been picking off this dip. I'm basically, you know, catching the falling knife, so to speak, at this point. But I really do believe in their company and they have a growing EPS and a lot of stuff going for them. Um, but at some point, I'm just gonna have to live with where my cost basis lands on Enphase. All right, guys, so that's a look at my portfolio after today's crash. $4,700 in paper gains have turned into paper losses. Let me know how you fare today and what your plan of attack is over the next couple of weeks in the comments. Thanks everybody for watching. Please give me a like and subscribe if you enjoy stock market content. We'll see you on the next video.